The newly formed Oklahoma Entertainment Communications Emergency Task Force understands the impact the COVID-19 pandemic is having on Oklahomans who work in the entertainment industry, many of whom are self-employed or gig workers. The good news is that unemployment benefits have been extended to self-employed and 1099 gig workers. In this video, we'll walk you through the process of filling out that information online. There are a couple things you need to know before you start. The first thing is, is that the state unemployment system was not built for this. They're adding some things on in order to be able to get you to qualify. So please be patient. This process can take two to three weeks to work through it. Basically what's going to happen is you're going to be rejected. And then because you check certain things in this application, they're going to go back and reevaluate your application. So be patient, understand that this is different for the state to do this, but ultimately what we're trying to do is make sure that you can get some money. In addition to the state benefit, you'll be eligible for a federal benefit of $600 per week. So the first step in the process is to go to the unemployment website for the state of Oklahoma. So why don't you hit pause and go ahead and call that up on another browser page and you can follow along as we go down through the process. This is the landing page for the Oklahoma Employment Security Commission. And there's some valuable information on here. One of the most important things is to know that if you qualify, you'll be getting a debit card and they will fill the debit card with the money and you'll use that to buy things. So if we're ready to go, let's go to the next step and you can go down to the bottom of the page and click continue. There's really nothing for you to do on this page. So just go down to the bottom where it says continue and click it. This page is basically telling you you need to keep your information up to date. So um, if you understand that, just click the button that says understand and we'll move on. You enter your social security number twice on this page. They both have to match. So it is verified and then you go ahead and click the continue button again. This page is where you create your account. So you're going to enter a PIN number, enter it twice, and then you're going to answer security questions. So if you ever forget your password or your PIN, this is how they're going to be able to verify you are you. Once you've done that, go ahead and click continue. This page contains a lot of information as to what you'll need to complete the form. You'll notice here that it talks about W-2s and an employer business and all that. Don't worry about that. We, there's a way around that, so just uh, hang with us. Go ahead and click continue at the bottom of the page. This page is basically telling you that until you get a confirmation page at the end of the process, you have not completed the process. So look for that at the end. And if you're ready to go, go ahead and click continue. What you see on this page is what you're gonna see on most of them. So basically there are a few questions, you answer those, and then you can move on. So it's just a pull down menu, select the correct answer. Are you a resident of Oklahoma? Were you living in Oklahoma at the time you became unemployed? Are you a citizen of the United States? Once you've answered those, go ahead and click continue. Three more questions. Did you work in Oklahoma between October 1st of 2018 and December 30th of 2019? Not including federal or military, have you worked in another state between October of 2018 and September of 2019? And have you filed a claim in another state? So answer these questions. And when you have, go ahead and click. Two questions here. Did you work for the federal government since October 1st of 2018? Or did you work for the military since October 1st, 2018? Answer those and then click continue. Little demographic information on this page. The following questions are used for statistical purposes only. What is your gender? Are you Hispanic or Latino? What is your ethnic background? Are you handicapped? Go ahead and use the pull down menus, answer these questions, and then click continue. This section is designed for normal W-2 folks. Not quite sure how it's going to apply to you, but because when you file for unemployment normally, you're required to make good faith effort to try and become employed again, and the state assists you with that by attempting to match you with companies or staffing agencies that can help you with that. This information is helpful to them. So try to fill this out as best you can, but don't worry about it too much. Click Continue. 
Finally, this is where you actually get to enter your name. So go ahead and do that. Answer these other questions. And these are just basic. And then we'll move on to the next page. Click continue. Again, this is basic information. Where do you live? Fill out your address. Answer the county of residence. And is your residence address the same as your mailing address? Go ahead and do that. Then click continue. Enter your contact information on this page, your phone number and email address. Once you've done that, go ahead and click continue. Are you a member of a labor union? Go ahead and indicate that here and then click continue. Because you're self-employed and with COVID-19, we're not really sure when this is going to happen. So I would go ahead and just select no and then click continue. I would recommend answering this as a no. This is normally used to calculate your potential lost earnings. So if you're a gig worker or self-employed, you want them to calculate replacement based off of a full year and not a partial one. So go ahead and put no here and then click continue. I'd recommend responding yes to this question, even though we all know things shut down for a while. This is more asking whether you're making a good faith effort to become employed again. And it's another question that's more for the normal, not COVID-19 process. So just go ahead and say yes, and then click continue. If you have an injury or disability, et cetera, that would restrict your ability to work, go ahead and list those here. But Governor Stitt's shelter order is the only thing limiting, so I'd probably go ahead and say no here. Then click continue. Answer this question as to whether you have a reliable way to get to work, and then click continue. Go ahead and answer whether you're going to school or not and then click Continue. Answer this question about workers' compensation, and then click Continue. If you're receiving any benefits under these two programs, go ahead and indicate that here, and then click Continue. I would recommend including any time that relates to your craft here, not just time spent at a gig, but include travel time, rehearsals, and anything else that you do or did that relates to your paid performance, because this is used to determine whether you are eligible for full-time or part-time benefits. If you're gonna do that, I would recommend that you compile or gather a log so you can keep track of those things in case you're asked to prove those hours. Once you've got that total put together, put that in there and then click continue. I would recommend answering this yes, and then go ahead and click continue. This page asks if you're willing to accept the same salary as you earned before. I would go ahead and click yes, and then click continue. This page asks about working the same number of hours that you did before. I would say yes, and click continue. This page asks whether your work was on commission. I would answer no and then click continue. Okay, this is a key page for you. Now, if you answer yes on being self-employed, you will initially be denied unemployment benefits, but they're going to go back, they're going to look at these, and they're going to go ahead and grant it. So in order to be considered under self-employment, you need to check yes. So Click yes, and then go ahead and click continue. This is another question for the normal process. I would recommend answering these as indicated here. Yes, no, no, then click continue. Indicate here whether you've served as an elected government official since October 1st, 2018, and then click continue. Were you employed by an educational institution since October 1st, 2018? While teachers are on break, they can't get unemployment insurance. So most likely answer no, and then click continue. Again, this is an important question. You wanna go ahead and answer this one, yes. This kind of puts you into the good pile as far as qualifying for uh, COVID-19 relief. And then click continue. 
This next set of questions deals with other income sources. If you indicate that you are receiving them, be aware that they will be deducted from your unemployment benefits. Will you be receiving pension or retirement benefits? Even if you're pulling money out of a retirement account to make ends meet, unless it's a retirement account your business set up and you've been contributing to it, I'd answer no if you're self-employed. Indicate that, then continue. Are you receiving severance pay? Indicate that here, yes or no, and then hit continue. Are you receiving profit sharing? If you are, go ahead and indicate that and then hit continue. This page deals with vacation pay. Indicate whether you're receiving it and then click continue. Again, additionally, are you receiving holiday pay? Indicate whether you are, and then click Continue. If you're self-employed or a gig worker, this really doesn't apply. So go ahead and indicate No, and then click Continue. The dates indicated may be different for you uh, because I believe these roll over and change as we move through time. So just indicate whether that's true, whether you've worked um, between whatever that range of dates are, and then click Continue. This page deals with withholding taxes from your unemployment benefits. Just know that if you get paid these and you do not have tax taken out and you file taxes next year, that you will be expected to pay tax on your unemployment benefits, both state and federal. Indicate that and then hit continue. Nothing to answer on this, so go ahead and click continue. Again, this is a question that is for the normal process, but go ahead and click select your employer and click continue. This is one of those questions that applies to the normal process since you're self-employed or a gig worker. There really isn't a way to fill this out that makes sense, but I would just go ahead and employer name, type self-employed, and then fill out the information, employer name, put your name, your address, your zip code, all that stuff, and then go ahead and click continue. I hesitate to give any advice on this page because it simply is not designed for self-employment applicants. What you do want to do is make sure you correctly estimate the amount of money that you made in that time period because this will be used to estimate benefits. And I recommend that you have some sort of paperwork to back this number up, whether it's prior tax returns, 1099s, or very detailed and specific bank transaction log. That's as far as I could go in the process. If I clicked one more time, it was going to go ahead and submit the application, which I didn't want to do. Remember to print out your confirmation page and write down your case number. That's how everyone's going to identify you, and that'll speed up the process if you have questions or need to contact someone with the state. So go ahead and submit your application. Be patient. It may take two to three weeks before you hear back. We are constantly updating the resources on our website, so please check out okfilmmusic.org. We look forward to getting past this time and look forward to getting you the help that you need and deserve. Okay.